Uh, these are turbulent times, Emma. Incredibly turbulent times. I mean, what what do you pick up on? There is obviously the um, you know, rather sinister threats now from the Houthis of sort of potential for retaliation. That makes you think about things like, you know, the terror threat in our own country mm. and suicide bombers, as well as obviously the immediate sort of destabilization of the region. Um, there's the issue of, you know, it's been revealed how completely precarious global trade is, you know, everything basically coming down to extremely narrow mm. straits of canals and things like that. So, you know, what would you do if you were the British government? It's quite obvious that some action had to be taken yeah, because yeah. what do you do? Do nothing and suddenly we have inflation or, you know, threats yeah. to energy security and disruption of global trade. Um, or do you risk causing the potential for some quite seriously catastrophic conflict for in World the World War yeah. III, that's what we're talking about. I mean, and what I want to know, uh, um, Alex and Ella, is this. You know, I mean, I'm not calling for the return of this convention, but before you bombed the hell out of countries, the convention used to be that you declared war. Uh, so now what seems to happen is we bomb the hell out of countries and so it was self-defence and uh, uh, it was very proportionate and so on and so forth. So 60 targets, 16 sites, five dead. Uh, I mean, not to put too fine a point on it, last night we went to war in the Middle East, didn't we? I think, you know, we've got to be careful about the language we use because this is such an inflammatory situation and certainly if we start declaring war, there'll be plenty of people want to gather together. Nobody and does and anymore. Western Nobody access. does and, anymore. Though. And, uh, and, and give as good as they get. And I think that it's important to point out this is targeted based on military bases where people are firing long-range missiles at shipping. Uh, but I think what's important to look at here is what's led us up to this situation. I think, Ellie, you'd be an interesting person to talk to about this because there are big arguments on Twitter, as there always are. It becomes a culture war every five seconds. But there is, I think, an argument to say that the sort of strong-armed Trump approach, you said you can't negotiate with Iran, you can't trust them, compared to Joe Biden, who has essentially um, cut off arms sales to Saudi, who were themselves at war with Yemen, who removed the terrorist organization designation of the Houthis, and then started negotiations with Iran, and you roll the clock forward and, oh, look, we have suddenly a situation mm -hmm. where ne'er-do-wells in the Middle East are, are causing trouble. Well, you know, it's an incredibly complex situation that often on places like Twitter or social media gets boiled down to who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. And um, there's been a lot of discussion about, you know, the fact that uh, Western intervention in previous eras, whether it was in Iraq or the backing of the Saudis, or indeed, you know, the history of the Houthis themselves is mired in sort of complex involvement of, and particularly the US, in ways in which has caused quite a lot of disruption in the area. Um, does that mean that you say it's all the West's fault Therefore, we should do nothing and touch nothing and, um, you know, go home and beat ourselves. Well, maybe there's a little bit of truth of that. Maybe there's quite a lot of truth to that. But you have to sort of be a bit of a grown-up and say, well, this is the challenge that we are faced um, today. And far be it from me to be a big um, sort of cheerleader or fan of the British Army and the British government. But I think taking this kind of targeted action completely makes sense. And I think we also have to stress, you know, a lot of people, uh, even though it's British uh, jets last night, joining America and other allies to launch this uh, very significant bombing strike, uh, a lot of people go, well, it's miles away, isn't it? you know, it's uh, in the Middle East, you know, it doesn't really affect us. It will, and it will soon. Uh, first of all, I would imagine uh, our terrorist alert will uh, go up to red or whatever the highest uh, alarm is. And uh, also, this is going to hit people in the pocket because uh, with this going on, the Houthis vowing some kind of retaliation. Let's not forget they're not just a bunch of thugs, you know, with a couple of grenades. They're a serious military force force they're vowing retaliation and that is bound to make cargo going through the Suez Canal and the Red Sea even more threatened and therefore that won't happen and before too long that's going to be hitting us in the pocket big time